Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Uh, good day, viewers. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, uh, this Thursday uh, in our Daily Fountain devotion. Uh, we welcome you and is brought to you by the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. God bless you as we uh, take this devotion together. Uh, today we are going to look at uh, the topic, Never Join the Multitude in committing evil never join the multitude in committing evil and our text will come from exodus chapter 23 1 to 9 exodus chapter 23 1 to 9 let us pray father we want to thank you for calling us out as your people lord to be different to be the light of the world to be the salt of the earth Father, to show the way to others. We pray, Jehovah, that, Lord, you will help us. You will give us understanding. The Bible says that the righteous is as bold as lion. We pray, Jehovah, for this uh, nature in us, the nature of God. Father, to have dominion, to dominate, to Lord God, every human nature, O oh God, so that, Father, we will be relevant in this generation where you brought us to. Father, King of glory, that our life, O oh Lord God, will turn things around and change situations and circumstances, even our environment. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text again is uh, Exodus 23, 1 to 9. And I read from the New King James Version. You shall not circulate a false report. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. You shall not follow a crowd to do evil. Nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to turn aside after many to pervert justice. You shall not show partiality to a poor man in his dispute. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden, and you will refrain from helping it, you shall surely help him with it. You shall not pervert the judgment of your poor in his dispute. Keep yourself far from a false matter. Do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. And you shall take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. Also, you shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, because you were strangers in the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here is my perspective. So everything we have been commanded to not do in the passage we just read, Exodus chapter 23, verse 1 to 9, are what the people of the world do. Okay? Everything that God has commanded us not to do in this passage are what the people of the world do. So what will be how will people see us when we do the same thing that the people of the world do so there is no difference between us and them okay so look at what paul told uh, the corinthian christians in second corinthians chapter 6 uh, 14 and 15 from the new living translation he said because we just read the New King James Version. So let me use the New Living Translation to uh, read this. He said, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. Don't team up with those who are, who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? 
How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? Okay? Don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. That's the summary of what Paul uh, uh, told the Corinthians. We have been called out to be holy and separate. God has called us out. We are not, we are not like them. We used to be there. We were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We have made the light of the world. Okay? The light of the world. So, if there is darkness and we walk in, a child of God walks into a dark place, a dark system, a dark structure, okay? A, a dark company, a dark business, a child of God walks into it. There must be different. Something must change. Things we no longer be done the way it used to be done before. We, we can't be doing the same thing all over and expect a different result. We cannot. We have to do things different. We have to be different. That is why the, uh, what we are talking about today is so germane. That, you know, don't, never join the multitude to commit evil. Part of the problem we have in this country today is the fact that, you know, we are all, everybody is a Christian, so to say. In fact, I will say it this way, you know, even our cars are born again. You know, you see in our cars, you know, all kinds of stickers, you know, f uh, about God. And the same people you're going to meet in the office, the same people you're going to meet in, the, in their workplace. And you ask yourself, all this lifting holy hands, all this praying in tongues, all these night vigils, all these things that we do, and I am in no way saying that they are wrong. But if the same people, the same character that do all these things are the people you meet, some of them you meet them in the office, you ask yourself, where is the Christ in what this woman is doing, this man is doing? So it looks like the church is raising a bunch of prayer collectors. So we verbalize these things. But in our actions, it's not there. Oh my God, have you not read that the Bible says that you are the Bible that people read? You are the Bible that people read. When they see you, they, there are people that might never read the Bible. The only way they will know what the Bible talks about is when they see you. Again, you go back to how the first people, first, first, first believers were called Christians. They were called Christians because of their way of life. They were called Christians because they were not conforming to the dictates of the Roman society then. And the people looked at them and said, these guys are different. These guys are not like us. And somebody say, oh, they are followers of Christ. So they started calling them Christians. So today, you are called a Christian. The question is, are you really a Christian? When you join unbelievers to commit iniquity, when you join, you know, when you, when you follow them to do what is not right. So let me ask the question, why do, and that is how I'm going to address this uh, uh, topic. Why do Christians sometimes join the multitude to do the wrong things? Why do Christians sometimes join the multitude to do the wrong things? And one might be lack of genuine conversion. Lack of genuine conversion, you know, not wholeheartedly given your life to Christ. A, a preacher said that some people, instead of dying at the cross, fainted. Okay, they passed out. They got to the cross. They saw the image of Jesus. They saw the blood. They saw the suffering. They did, you know, and they fainted. They fainted. And people like that, what it would take to revive them, if you do a CPR on them, chest compression, okay, 
and uh, you know uh, give them some oxygen they will just revive so the devil will come and look at this guy instead of dying with christ he fainted at the cross and the devil will do a cpr give the person some oxygen and he will revive so nothing changed a christian is supposed to be a dead man according to galatians 2:20 a, a Christian is supposed to be a dead man. The book of Galatians, Paul, writing to the Galatians, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Paul, have been crucified with Christ. So, it's right for me to say, Chukuma has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am living a borrowed life. It's not my life. If you're a Christian, it's not your life. It's not your life. And that is why we have to be careful with some of the things we say sometimes. You know, when we garnish our conversation with I, 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 I. This, this person did this to me. This person did the other one to me. So, 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 they did to you. Are you sure? If you have been crucified with Christ. If it's no longer you that live, if it's Christ that lives in you, if it's Christ that lives in you, it means that whatever they do, they do, whatever they have done, they have not done it to you, they have done it to Christ. You remember how, what Jesus said to uh, uh, Saul on his way to Damascus. He said to them, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? So why, when Saul was was in the business of persecuting the children of God, even to the extent of people being killed. It was not really those people that were being persecuted. It was Christ that they were persecuting. No wonder he said, if you will hold your peace, I will fight for you. No wonder he said, I will fight against them that fight against you, just for you to hold your peace. If you hold your peace, if you let me, if you sit at the, my right hand, I will make sure that I subdue your enemy. But if you want to fight your battle, you go ahead and fight your battle. And God will, God will fold his hands. So, we are expected. The expectation, it, what is supposed to be, is that we are all going to be dead people. Dead people, no longer us that live. So, that's the reason why... Christians, sometimes, you know, sometimes Christians join the multitude to do the wrong things because they are still living. And, and, and you know, this dead, dying thing it is serious for Paul. Paul will say, I die daily. So, so, so it's a daily thing, it's a daily struggle, it's a daily battle, it's a daily fight. It, will the devil come to, you know, revive you, to try to revive you? Yes, he will come to try to revive you, but you will make sure you never get revived. You keep, you keep, you keep pushing back. You keep hitting your body. You keep making sure that it is not going to be you that is talking. You are not reacting based on the dictates of the flesh. You react. Your reaction should be coming from the, the, from the realm of the spirit. Why do Christians sometimes join multitude to do the wrong things? Secondly, the fear of persecution. The fear of persecution. When we are afraid of persecution. And, and by the way, you know persecution is part of the deal. Part of the deal. In the book of Isaiah, the Bible says, when you go through the waters, when you go through the fire, so it's not a question of if, it's a question of when it will come. It's part of the deal, part of being a child of God, part of what we do as a child of God. The Bible said in uh, uh, Acts of Apostles 14, uh, verse 22b, it said, We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So persecution is part of the deal that God, that we sign with God. You are going to be persecuted. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they hated me, they will hate you. 
So we should not, we should not expect everybody. I think it's you know false expectation. We expect everybody to like us just because you're a Christian, everybody likes you. No, not everybody wants to do the right thing. But you as a Christian, please do the right thing. Do the right thing. Sometimes it will lead to some things that you will not like. You might even be fired. Somebody will query you. All kinds of things will happen to you. But at the end of the day, when I was in high school, there was this book we read. I can't remember the name. But I always remember the quote. After you've done this and that, and at the end you won by honest means, you are satisfied. Because this is one of the victories of life. After you have been troubled, after you've gone through all kinds of things, at the end of the day, you still stand your ground. You are satisfied. Imagine, 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 just imagine if Joseph, because of temporary um, uh, 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 privilege, you know, something that he doesn't even know how long it's going to last, got into that relationship with Potiphar's wife. You know, Dave, Joseph might end up, you know, being a, a fornicator, head of the civil uh, service unit in the house of Potiphar. He will just end up being the chief servant. And you know, you know, there is the devil is, is starts something with you. He won't tell you the how it's going to end. It might not also even end well. You know, one day, one day, the woman will get tired of him because another young person with six packs will come. Another young person that is handsome will come. Another young person that, that can, can perform better than him will come. And he will dump him. And that will be the end of Joseph. But Joseph said, no, I cannot do this. I will not do this. I will not sin against God. Brothers and sisters, don't because of persecution. What happened to him, you all know. But it was through everything that happened. It was what got him to the palace. You know, after you have suffered a while, that's what the Bible says, after you have suffered a while, God will definitely say to you, don't forget that. Why do Christians sometimes join the multitude to do the wrong things? Three, not being fully aware of who we are. Not being fully aware of who we have been called to represent on earth. Not being fully aware of the fact that we are ambassadors. When we don't know who we are, when we don't know who we have been called to represent, it gets us into this compromised position. You know, we want to, you know, because of temporary gain, we want to, we just, just do it. Other, they say others are doing it, you know, you know like, like if you can't beat them, you join them. Because we don't know who we are here to represent. It is important we keep, we understand who we are. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. That is who you are. You are God's ambassador. Your saint nation is the kingdom of heaven. You represent God here. And the Bible says that where the word of a king is, there is power. You have authority. Jesus gave you authority. He said, occupy for me till I come. You are not here by yourself. You are here because God sent you. That office where you are, that job, it doesn't matter what you do. Maybe you're a security guard. Maybe you are uh, an, an, a, 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 a senior aide. Or maybe you are a junior official. It doesn't matter what you are doing. You are are occupying a position. You are there as the ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. You have to be fully aware of that. You are different. You must not do what they do. You must not do what they do. 
you must not do what they do. You will take orders from the sent kingdom. That's where you take orders from. You don't take orders from them. Jesus will say you are in this world, but you are not of this world. You are in this world, you are not of this world. And Jesus taught us to pray and say, we should say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. So it is whatever is obtainable in heaven that we are going to be doing here. This is dress rehearsal for us. This is dress rehearsal for us. When we say, let the kingdom of God come, we are saying, let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Who are going to implement this will? It is you, the ambassador of heaven. It is you, the ambassador of heaven. It is you that will, 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 will implement this thing. It is you that will start doing this thing. And other people will, watch, will be watching and they will be looking at you. After a while, they will say, oh my God, this way is the right way. That is how you keep conscripting people into the kingdom of God. So that others are doing it doesn't make it right. That others are doing it doesn't make it right. Okay? Your fountain, you know, check this. Your fountain should not produce sweet water and bitter water at the same time. James said it. Your fountain should not produce sweet water and bitter water at the same time. You cannot be, in, on Sunday, you are a Christian, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, demon chaser, just after service. In fact, some, sometimes some people even start their quarrel from their heart, you know, because they look at how this, this person is dressed, okay? They start their quarrel and envy will start creeping in, or maybe the, the pastor you know, recognize somebody, you know, say something about somebody, and the, 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 the person is like, oh, why not me? Okay? We are not like them. We cannot be Christians on Sunday, and on Monday we become uh, ambassadors of the kingdom of devil. We cannot be God's ambassadors on Sunday and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, except the few hours we attend fellowship in church. We become ambassadors of Christ and the rest, maybe you have not observed it. Next time you go to a Chinese restaurant, you will see their Buddha. You will see their Buddha in front of the, the restaurant. You see their Buddha, they're positioned there. They go to the market with their God. They go to the market with their God. Even the Muslims do the same thing. I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to say whether it's from the heart or not from the heart. But the fact that they go to the marketplace with their God. How about you, Christian? We are not going to be displaying all these things. Yeah, I know we have all kinds of signs. But our life should preach the gospel to others. Our life, God kept us here so that through our life, our, our, our way of life, others will know who this God is. They will come to Christ. They will accept him as the, their Lord and their personal Savior. We should not only go to church. You know, Jesus should, should feel everything. Oh, it's all in all. He should be all in all. Whether we are here, whether we are in church, whether we are in fellowship, in our office, in, in, our, in our business uh, premises, you know, it's going to be all about Christ. Because that is who we are. Our lifestyle is the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. I want to encourage us to not join the multitude when we, to commit sin. To not join the multitude to commit iniquity. To not join the multitude to commit evil. Because at the end of the day, we are all going to be accountable for everything that we have done. God has given us wonderful opportunity. He has exposed us to the gospel. He has, uh, he has, he has, he has made a difference in our life. Let's not like the dog 
return back to our vomit. My prayer is that uh, from today, you know, our life will begin to show forth the praise of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray. Father, again, we just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jehovah. It is the child that the Father loves that he uh, disciplines. Father, Lord God, the way and manner your word has appeared to us today. My prayer, O oh God, is that our hearts will be open to, uh, to accept it, O oh God. That, Father, our lives, O oh God, will begin to make a difference. I pray, Jehovah, for your children, especially those that are operating in places, oh God, where it might look difficult to, uh, uh, to be a Christian. I pray Jehovah for courage. I pray Jehovah the Lord you will remind them who they are, that they are the righteous, they are as bold as lions, that they are your ambassadors, and they are there by your authority. Father, King of glory, I pray that none of us will be ashamed of of you in our workplace. We will not be ashamed of you in our business premises. We will not be ashamed of you in our homes. We will not be ashamed of you in our dealings with all our fellow human beings. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your holy name, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Remember to join us tomorrow for another edition of Daily Fountain Devotional. God bless you real good. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.